Hey everybody, welcome to Lou on Lost. This is episode 4, The Substitute. I just want to add that no, I did not laugh when John Locke fell out of his wheelchair. I did laugh though when he was getting owned in the head with sprinklers. And holy crap, it's Helen. We haven't seen her since like season 2. Oh, Locke and her are finally engaged. That's good for Locke. Alright, so I'll invite my mom and my dad, and then we'll invite your dad. Wait a second. Why would we invite your dad? That is the same guy who pushed you out of a window. What is different? Why is John Locke now talking to his father again all of a sudden? John Locke's dad is not a bad guy anymore. Assuming that John Locke's dad would not be invited to the wedding since he pushed him out of a freaking window? If he didn't push him out of a window, how is Locke paralyzed now? It's John Locke and Helen are very forgiving. Hey look, awesome job at that meeting in Australia, man. You totally hit it on the head. Uh, it comes to my records to show that you didn't go to any of them, though. So, you're fired. Who's parking in my space? Sorry, dude, but, you know, I own the company. Hooray, Hurley saves the day. He's gonna get John Locke a new job. Hooray, it's Rose also. She's also in John Locke's life as well. But she still has cancer. I knew it. Do I call him? Screw it. I guess Jack and Locke were not meant to be in each other's lives in this timeline. Uh, obviously John Locke is happy the way he is with Helen, so why not? Who took all the coffee? Don't you know that when you pour yourself coffee, there's none left, you make a new one? Ben Linus, European history. John Locke, the substitute. Smoke monster point of view look? Awesome. <laughs> Richard's tied up in a bag. Here Richard, have some water. <laughs> Alright, that's enough. Richard, if you come with me, I can explain why you've been wasting your life this whole time. I'm not going anywhere. Holy crap, little kid. Who was that? Big Locke decides to go get Sawyer. Who are you? You're not Locke. Sawyer's got a really good eye for telling people apart, even throughout the whole series. I should probably put on pants. You know the rules. You can't kill him. Don't tell me what I can't do. Fake Locke has a lot of old John Locke in him, if you think about it. He's a strong person, and he's also like saying a lot of things that Old Locke does. Could be just a side effect of taking over John Locke's body. Just off the top of my head, I'm assuming that's little Jacob of some kind, or Jacob in some kind of form. Also makes me think that the entire time that maybe it was Jacob this whole time who was like showing images to people, like for instance, Kate with the horse, you know, Jack with his dad, Hurley with that imaginary friend. Maybe it was Jacob. Or it could have been a combination of both. Back to the four-toed statue. Tell me what happened to them. John Locke turned into a pillar of black smoke and killed them all. Did he kill Jacob too? Um, yep. Leanna goes on to say that he's recruiting. But what is he recruiting for exactly? I mean, we know later on in the episode that he talks to Sawyer about leaving the island. But what exactly is he recruiting for? Is there going to be a war of some kind? I mean, we know that Jacob said at the end of Season 5 that they're coming, but we have yet to know who is. Oh wow, Ben's actually sympathetic at John Locke's little funeral thing. Yeah, too bad he's only said nice things about him after the one time he killed him, and after the other time he buries him. You gotta work on that, Ben. Sawyer, why are you going down the 15th century ladder? You know it's gonna collapse or something like that. And why did they just have the whole ladder attached from the bottom all the way up? Did they really have to make it into like three pieces? Hold on, Sawyer! Oh, yes! Hooray for athleticism. So when they entered the man in the black shirt's uh, cave or house or whatever you want to call it, uh, did you guys notice that the scales weren't completely even? It looked like that the black stone was a little heavier than the white stone, therefore the white stone was up higher. But then when he took off the white stone and threw it into the ocean, it was just the black stone left. Um, I'm not too sure what the significance is there and like how that was supposed to play it off. But whatever it is, the white stone obviously represents Jacob, and that means he's, you know, since he's dead, no more white stone. The moment of truth finally comes. The numbers represent people. After all this time, we, know, we now know that. I wonder why the numbers represent them, though, and why are those numbers significant? 4. Locke. 8. Hurley. 15. Sawyer. 16. Saeed. 23. Jack. 42, either Jin or Sun Quan. We're not sure. I, I wonder why the numbers are also so low. 
maybe it's a countdown to zero. Because if you guys noticed, there were all those other numbers were in like the 300s, the 200s. Very weird. I'm still undecided if that's actually, you know, guy in the black shirt's place. You know, I mean, he said Jacob wrote it down, but I don't know. Check out the link for the picture. Fakeoff goes on to tell Sawyer that he has three choices to choose from now. But I wonder why the Lost Riders are always making it so complicated. Can't there always just, can't there only be just like one decision finally to make? Can't it just be like one specific thing? I wonder how they figure that out. Alright guys, we gotta think of something for Fake Glock to tell Sawyer. I have an idea. How about we have Fake Glock tell Sawyer that he can do nothing? No, 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 that's horrible. How about we have it so that Fake Glock tells Sawyer that he can be a protector of the island? Guys, first off, we're Lost Riders. We put everything we think into this show. So why don't we just keep doing that, right? Yeah, that's true. I guess. Or something like that. Also, did anybody notice that there was no Jack or Cake this episode? Yes! Alright, real fast. My theory on Jacob and the guy in the black shirt, I am not sure anymore who was the good guy and who was the bad guy. I feel like that they're both bad guys in a way for using other people to do what they want to do. I mean, they're obviously higher than people. They're some kind of spirit or god of some kind. But I wonder why that we still don't know why that these people were specifically chosen. Also, have you noticed that Kate was not one of those numbers to protect the island? I wonder if it had to do with what Jacob told her about not stealing. And if that's one of breaking the rules of not becoming a guardian. Then again, Saeed also would kill people, so how he can, and she is, I don't know. At this point, I'm still going to stick with that Jacob is the good guy. Um, you know, the fake lock or guy in the black shirt, whatever you want to call him, put up a really good argument to Sawyer. And it obviously convinced Sawyer because, you know, Sawyer's main thing is to get off the island. But I really don't know what the story is. I can't wait for the next couple of episodes. Next week's episode is called Lighthouse. Not too sure what to expect. Um, expect a lot of Kate and Jack, unfortunately. And hopefully we get back on the story of Saeed. But as for next week, thank you for tuning in. And I will talk to you guys later.